Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. We've got one for the beginners today, but no matter what your skill level is, you can benefit from watching this video because I get asked this all the time from people of all skill levels, and it has to do with queries. Sometimes you need another query, a second query, to use criteria or complicated calculations in Microsoft Access. I see this all the time where people start putting all kinds of crazy calculations in the query and then they wonder why it won't work. So we're going to talk about that today. All right, first some prerequisites before we get into it. Even though this is a beginner video, I got some prerequisites for you, some things I'm going to use in the samples. For example, string concatenation, that's putting two or more strings together or two values together to make a single value. And when we do that in a query, we create a query calculated field. You can also do it in a form field. So go watch these two videos if you're not sure about how to do either of these things. You should know how to use the string function. Specifically, we're just going to use the left function to take the left character off of the string value. We're going to use query criteria. That's where we can specify certain records to look up. And we're going to use a parameter query. And yes, these are all beginner topics. I cover all these on my beginner lessons. All right, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want to, but the examples we're going to be doing are pretty simple. I've got a customer table, and let's say that I want to assign each customer a customer code, and that's going to be based on their first name and their customer ID. So we're going to go to a query, create, query design. We're going to bring in the customer table. Close this now. And let's say I just need their customer ID and their first name to generate this customer code. We're going to put that right here as a calculated field. All right, I'm going to zoom in so you can see this better. Shift F2. We're going to say the customer code, CCODE, customer code, is going to be equal to the left of first name, comma, one. It's going to be the left first character of their first name field. I'm going to concatenate onto them. I'm going to add to that their customer ID. Yes, you can add numeric values and strings together like that. Hit OK, and now when I run this, I get a nice little customer code for each of my customers. And it should be unique because the customer ID is unique, so we shouldn't have to worry about that. All right, so this looks good. So now let's say for my shipping department, I want to add to this customer code what their state is as well. And that helps them to know, like, you know, shipping cost or whatever, what sales rep it goes to. I don't care. A lot of people do this, they make these weird calculated codes. So let's say that the shipping code is going to be their customer code and their state. Okay? Why? I don't know. Let's just Some businesses have weird things that they put together like this. You wouldn't believe this stuff, the stories I can tell you. Now when I run this, everything's working fine. All right, so each customer now has a unique shipping code. And the, the last two digits of that tell them where... Just ship it, of course, assuming they have a state, not everybody does. All right, so now let's say I've got this. Let me save this as my ship queue, or whatever you want to call it. And now let's say I want to run a, uh, I want to put a criteria on this. I only want to find this particular guy, this R9WA. Okay, so come into here, and now I'm going to find in here, inside of quotes, R9WA. I'm looking for that specific shipping code. Okay, so I put a criteria on it. And now I run it, and I get and a parameter value. It forgot what the C code is. It doesn't know what C code is. Why is that? Well, because it evaluates this, all these calculations, when the query is done running. And so it can't apply the criteria because it doesn't know what this is yet. Right? It's got to run through all the records before it can do that. So the solution to this problem is this now becomes too complicated to use criteria on. So I'm going to cancel it. All right, take that criteria off of there. But now what we can do is we can save the ship queue. We can make a second query, another query. All right, so create, query design, bring in the first query, which is ship queue. Okay, bring in all these if you want to. But now this gets evaluated first. So now Access knows what all of these values are. And you can now say for the ship code, I want, what was it, R2? I forget what it was. Let me take a look. R, R9WA, right? That's the one we're looking for. So I can put that down here as a criteria now. And when it runs, bam, there it is. 
And yeah, you get you get it twice. So what we could do is we could hide one of them. So now you only see it once. See? But it didn't know what the C code and the ship code were until it ran through the whole thing. Now, sometimes with calculations in here, you can do it in one query, especially if it's a straight numerics. Sometimes it works. But if it doesn't, this is what you have to do. You have to just run it through a second query. Now we'll just shave this, shave this. We're going to shave this. We're going to save this as ship to Q. Okay, and now we'll just use this. Or you can make this the kind of lookup query, a parameter query, right? Enter ship code like that, right, a parameter query. And now when the user runs this, you could type in R, I forget already, R2, what was it? Oh, I suck. All right, that one didn't show up. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> no, let's see, yeah, it is. Uh, let's look for M6TX, all right? So when we run this one, run it, M6TX, bam, there it is. Okay, so the key here is just to make a second query. So if you've got a query and you got a bunch of calculations in it and you're either getting an enter parameter value pop up or you're getting some kind of a, you know, any other kind of error, data type mismatch, all that stuff, try making another query, feed the results of that query into the new query and then use your criteria there. I go over this in many different examples on my courses. Of course, I've got lots of free beginner lessons on my website. All my tech help videos are free. So check those out as well. Now, in tomorrow's video, we're going to do a little more advanced example of this where I'm going to show you that a second query doesn't always fix the problem. It's kind of weird. We'll talk about it tomorrow. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, my friends. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course so I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes and no I didn't just put the video on fast forward <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well now if you like level one level two is just a dollar that's it one dollar and that's another whole like 90 minute course Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. 
Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.